Hello, I'd like to thank you once again for tuning in to this week's message. If you'd like more information about Journey Church, its various ministries, be sure to check us out at journeychurch.org or find us on Facebook where you can get additional resources to help you just grow in your walk of faith. We hope to see you sometime. If you're ever in the Jacksonville area, come on in and say hello. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. I think I'm going to get started. All right. First, I want to just thank God first. Amen. Amen for giving me the opportunity to speak to his precious sheep. Amen. You guys are uh, super loved by God, by everybody in this church. I want to thank uh, Pastor Eric and Mary Jo just for being great leaders. Amen. Great leaders, great pastors, great people. Amen. Wealth of knowledge. And Mary Jo just is awesome. Awesome. Prayer warrior, awesome. Yeah, I ain't got to, okay, she praying for you even because you didn't say nothing. <laughs> and uh, last week, if you was here for family day, wasn't it awesome? So me and, me and Pastor Kevin have, have this running joke when we have new, me, new members. I tell him, you're never supposed to talk in front of me. Because Pastor Kevin is like borderline genius, if you know him. He's like a borderline genius. And like, if he says anything before me he makes me look bad so I'm like dude you're not supposed to say anything so it's so ironic he preaches before I have to preach and I'm just sitting in the back like you did it again oh. you rascally rabbit you and to all the parents I just want to apologize to you for uh, sending your kids home bruised last week <laughs> for a glow in the dark dodgeball um, you're welcome and when you have frustrations that you need to get off of your chest, you too can join us for glow in the dark dodgeball to abuse a child. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. And we will do this again. So when you're ready, just stretch so you're not sore in the morning. Amen. The being gay ministry is real. And be prepared because they're going to throw back. Amen, amen. Let's pray. Anybody ready for the word today? Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the sweet spirit that's in this place. God, I decrease as you increase, God. Speak through my mouth. Speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind. Every heart in this place is good ground to receive the word of God. Every ear is anointed to hear what thus saith the Lord. Now, God, flow in this place, Father. Holy Spirit, we invite you in like never before. We pray the anointing of God destroy yokes, remove burdens. In Jesus' name, Satan, you have no place a lot in this sanctuary. We come against the forces of darkness and we plead the blood of Jesus against it now. Nothing but the word of God has authority in this room. We come against distractions. Father, release your ministering angels right now, and we bless you for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're talking about servanthood, and today I'm speaking about answering the call to serve. Answering the call to serve. Uh, Matthew twenty-two fourteen 14 says this. Many are called, but few are chosen. And if you're a follower of Christ, we all are called. Called to show the love of Christ and share this saving grace of Christ Jesus. Matthew 28 tells us to go and make disciples in all the ends of the earth. And Note takers, you in the house, note takers, note takers. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Note takers, you ready? If you're not a note taker, whip out that phone, take some notes, because I found this out. The shortest pen is greater than the longest memory. So when you write it down, you can keep it. And sometimes you got to take this word of God and whip it out when, it's, when, when you're in trouble. Don't call, your, don't call your best friend and get on Facebook. You better pull out every word, every note, and dive in God's word. Amen? 
Amen, amen, amen. So being called, this is what I have about being called. Being called is this. Being called is an average person telling an extraordinary God yes. Average person telling an extraordinary God yes. Giving God yes is step number one. That's just the first step. You know, that's, and, 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 and we all don't do it because a lot of times when God is calling us, we send God the voicemail. You know, when it rains and you look at that name, you know who it is. Oh my gosh, she calling me again. <sighs> swipe. And let me tell y'all something. It's rude when you swipe after the first ring because they know you don't want to talk to them. <laughs> it's rude. And God, he, call, he calls. We'll send him the voicemail. We'll even just look at him. Oh, I'll talk to God later. We put the things of God off so we can do the things that we, we're praying to God for, which is backwards to me. If we follow the voice of God, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added. The things that we're trying to accomplish when we seek God, it'll come to us instead of us seeking it. Oh, you don't got to say amen on that. I, I know that was good. I know that one. You know, we don't, Pastor Eric didn't wake up one day being an awesome communicator. He had to give God a yes. He had to yield his heart. I didn't wake up one day being awesome. <laughs> I had to give God a yes. You didn't wake up being the great person you are in the faith. You had to give God a yes first. You had to yield that heart. Because, like I said, yes is the first step. But your obedience to God matters. It matters to God. First Samuel 15, 22 says this. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to listen better than fat of rams. And you can, you like, we don't use fat of rams, but we do have Andrew Jackson and Benjamin Franklin. If somebody give you a Benjamin Franklin, you like, oh, God, thank you. Yes, Jesus. <laughs> Obeying God is better than you receiving money. Obeying God is better. And... Sometimes you got to obey God in faith. The Lord doesn't give us his full plan when we say yes. If we knew the full plan of God, some of us wouldn't walk this walk because there's some pain involved, there's some disagreements with other saints involved, but obeying God is always worth it. Giving God yes is worth it because, oh, I was about to go there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was about to jump in front, you know, Stick to the plan. This is one of my biggest rules. Some of us have heard the voice of God and gave God yes temporarily, and we stopped. And then we'll use this excuse, oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord for him to tell me what's next to do. No, 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 no. Take this with you for the rest of your life. Until God tells you something else, you obey the last thing he said. If God told you to, to work with Streetside Prayer and you went to Sundays, you're like, I don't think it was for me. No, no, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obeying God is it's like an onion. The will of God is ever folding. The more you step towards God, the more he reveals his plan. So, like I said, you have to obey in faith sometimes. Let's, let's go to the father of faith and see how he did it. Genesis 12, we're going to talk about Abraham, and one. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, 
and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And he who dishonors you, I will curse. And in all the families of the faith of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. <laughs> Abram was 75, Lord have mercy, years old when he departed from Haran. Reading this scripture, a few things stuck out to me. God spoke to Abraham. Abraham heard and obeyed. He didn't use his logic. He didn't, he didn't go consult his homeboys. He didn't call everybody on his social media page. He didn't type, you know what, I heard the voice of the Lord, and I think God just told me this. What do you guys think? Nope. He heard God and obeyed. And you know what? We should be greater at obeying God than Abraham. Why do you say that, Pastor Brinson? Because we have things Abraham didn't have. We have the word of God. Now think about it. This is Genesis. He didn't have anything about Jesus. He didn't have anything that Paul wrote about the faith. We should have a greater understanding of the voice of God, the character of God, and obeying God and knowing that it's right. We can hear God through reading his word. Some of us are waiting on the thunder, <laughs> lightning, the burning bush in the middle of Waffle House <laughs> to obey God. Because we know that Waffle House, hallelujah, Jesus. I don't know what they put in it, but it's from heaven. <laughs> God gave us 66 books. He gave us his word. He gave us pastors. You don't read where Abraham had a pastor. He only had one voice that told him to go. We can't obey that small voice that's sometimes telling us, tell that lady that Jesus loved her. We should be greater listeners than Abraham. Another thing that stuck out, when he told Abraham to go, now, now, Abraham, 75, right? He said, go. Now, Abraham, I, when I read the Bible, I think of myself in the Bible. Like, how, how would that look to me? Now, it had to be some work involved in obeying God. You got to do something. He said, go. Now, <laughs> I could just... Imagine him going home to Sarah. Baby, we got to get up out of here. <laughs> and I can imagine Sarah. Women, women, men, men. If you next to your wife, just look this way. <laughs> I'm, you won't get in trouble if you look this way. Just say, baby, I'm, oh, oh, I'm paying attention to the word of God right now. Just, just look, look this way. Women, we love you. Y'all seen that lady who was worshiping on the second song with the, the cuts on the jeans? She was so fine. I, look, my God. Inquisitive. Women are inquisitive. They want to know stuff. If you got a plan, you better tell them. Abraham went home. Baby, we got to get up out of here. Sarah like, <coughs> who going to carry this uh, couch? Going where? Now, women, you are decor creatures, and we love you. Your designs, your art, the floors, your throw pillows. <laughs> we love all of that. Now, think about, you know how much stuff you can accumulate in living in the place that you are. Now, they're in their 70s. How much stuff do you know they have in their house? You know Mike and Frank from American Pickers been at their house 10 times. <laughs> and Abraham talking about, we got to move. Sarah looking at him, 
Who's going to carry this couch? Who's going to move my stuff? Who's going to move all your altars you done built to some gods you didn't <laughs> talk about you heard? See that? And that's why I think they brought Lot with them. Because you know you got to take all your junk. You either taking it to or you bought it from big lots. Somebody get that later. Lot, big. Okay. Another thing that, that stood out in this Genesis. God told Abraham that he was going to make him great. Abraham didn't wake up as the father of faith as we know him in the word. He was an average man given an extraordinary God a yes. He said, you go, you obey, obey me first, and I will make you great. When we obey God, God does things in our lives through us, through our obedience. You know, we, we, we know about Billy Graham and his, his crusades and all that. Billy Graham is an ordinary man who told God yes. The Bible says this. If you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. The more we walk towards the will of God, the more that our heart is yielded to the Father of heaven the more his spirit comes upon us, the more his glory comes upon us. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things will be added. We have to go towards God first to see God work in our lives. So when we, we'll be like, you know, I th I'm thinking about working with the youth on Wednesday night. I just don't know. Tell God yes. Because some of us, we didn't know we had these great abilities until we took our natural and God put his super on our natural. It's like I think about um, Goldie's parents. They didn't wake up one day and I was like, we are amazing parents. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in high school, Goldie's mom didn't think she was going to be a great mom. She probably didn't want children in high school. She was like, I'm going to live free forever. <laughs> but she told God yes. She said, I'm going to take these kids who belong to God and be a good steward and give God a yes. And out of that, God made these parents great. Some of you are great parents and you didn't want to be parents. Some of y'all was forced to be parents. <laughs> Through decisions. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah in the biscuit. The altar is open. <laughs> but when we gave and yielded ourselves to the most high God, God began to make us great. Last thing that stuck out to me was Abraham was in his 70s when he told God yes. Now, you know, we, we got some 50, mid 50s in, in the house today and they're like, you know, I would uh, get in a small group or get in these Children's church, I would do it, but my time has passed. You know, I just want to go to church, pay my tithes, and tell God, thank you. Abraham was 70, and he told God, yes. Age shouldn't be an excuse to obey God. Anybody heard what I just said? Age, I don't care if you're 10 years old. If the word of God says, obey your parents for this is right in the Lord, you do what the word says. If God is speaking to your heart, saying, you know what? Join this ministry because I'm going to make you great. Well, I don't know how to pray good. I don't like being in front of people. Tell God yes. Watch his strength in you. 
He told Abraham, he said, I will bless those who bless you. Now, that is crazy to me. He said, out of all the families through you, I'm going to bless them. God's power is limitless. We're limited people. But with God's help, we can do extraordinary things for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Speaking of age limit, we're going to jump to 1 Samuel 3. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. I'm going to just say this. Some of us in our lives, we feel we don't hear the word of God and it's rare in our lives. Sometimes you need to distance yourself from the things of the world to hear the voice of God. If, you don't, if you're confused about where you need to serve and what you need to do for this life, leaving a legacy for the kingdom of God, because the Bible says the only thing that will last is the things that you do in the kingdom of God. That's what's going to last. But we don't know where to go. You know why you don't know and you can't hear in the voice of God is rare in your life. You need to put down Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. We're, we can look for the voice of God in social media and what if God is not there? You know what God is? He's in his own word. Well, oh, I got to see what such and such is. No, 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 no. You better stop checking these people posts. What is God posting in your life? Let God in your DM. Let the Lord speak to you in your, in your inbox. Okay. You don't have to say amen. Amen, amen. <laughs> and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see. They didn't have LASIK in those days. And was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, here I am. And ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Your breath stank. You waking me up. I can't hardly see. You just... Go somewhere. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and he went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at the other time. Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, speak for your servant hears. Serving God and obeying and answering the call, you have to give God a yes. You have to have a yield at heart. Don't let age be a, a crutch for you. In this scripture, some of us can hear the word of God and not know what to do with it. That's why we have a church home. That's why we have pastors. That's why we have people who are skilled at perceiving the voice of the Lord to help guide us. And this, this church is a great place to serve God in. We have so many places to serve. We have places in and outside of the church. If you, if you feel that you are called to street side prayer, the Clara White Missions, go and do that. Obey God. It's not so journey church can look good. You're obeying God, serving God, so you can advance the kingdom of God. If somebody didn't tell God yes, you wouldn't be sitting here. Think about the people who witnessed to you when you, you know, some of us used to be in the clubs. 
getting lit, dropping it like it was hot, <laughs> picking it up and doing it again. The teens don't know about dropping it, but some of y'all used to be professional droppers. <laughs> what about that person who came up to you when you used to drop it like it was hot and like, you know what, your life can be better. God love you. You should be in church. Stop what you're doing and, and, and trust God. And, and we didn't listen the first time, but one time we did. And look at us now. Because somebody was obedient and gave God a yes. Will you be that person to give God a yes? to advance the kingdom of God? Will you be the person to be like, ah, I didn't want to go to youth, but I came anyway. You know, and some people are like, oh, I tried to serve, it just wasn't for me. Well, you know, one of the best preachers, one of the greatest bishops to ever preach said this. Do or do not, there is no try. <laughs> Bishop Yoda from the Church of Star Wars. He gave that sermon on a mount. Changed my life. Amen. Do or do not, there is no try. Give God a yes. Either tell God yes or tell him no. We, we got to stop playing with the Lord. He said you either be hot or cold. Lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. Some people are like, I don't know if I'll be good at serving. Let God make you great. Let God make you This God church, amen? You're doing his will. Some people, some of you got jobs that God blessed you with. And you don't know how you became that good at that job. It's because the hand of God was on you. And can I say something? You don't have to be perfect when you tell God yes. You don't have to be perfect to serve. You don't have to be perfect. Let God perfect you. How can he do that? He, God can't do that. I'm just the way that I am. You use a lie. You know why? Because Luke 3.15 says this. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall become what? You mean to tell me I could come to God broke, busted, and disgusted, cussing, don't like nobody, but when I yield myself to the living God, he can make my way straight. Amen. Amen. You don't have to be perfect when you serve. You just got to go. You have to move. You have to obey. You got to be like Abraham. Abraham didn't use his logic because somebody who's 70, logically, we not moving. They're going to have to bury us in this house. They ain't, listen, them people ain't have AC. They ain't have a cartoon network. They had land, and that's it. We have so much more, and we can give God so much more of us. And some people are like, I don't have time, I don't have time. Do you know how much time you waste on your computer? If there is a survey on the human anatomy on how, how much people do this now from 1960, it would be crazy. The time we waste, we could be giving it to God. We could be advancing the kingdom. We could be saving souls. We could be saving lives. We could be praying for the sick. We could be raising the dead. We could advance the church like never before. The Bible said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. These are the last days. He's pouring out his spirit, but we're not in the place to receive it, to work it. Let's get in place, church. Let's work. Let's work while it's daylight. Let's, let's keep our oil and our, and, our, and our lamps before the Son of God comes back to get us. Let's make our daddy proud.
Matthew 21 says this. What do you think? A man had two sons. And he went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. I'm not going to work at youth with them crazy teenagers. But afterward, he changed his mind and went. And he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, go, sir. I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? Which one are you? Are you that person that signed up when we had the fairs in the back? I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah, I've been wanting to work. God has been putting this on my heart. I know I'm supposed to be serving. You signed up, but you didn't go. <laughs> are you that one that didn't sign up? But on the inside, God has been dealing with you. God has put so much in you. Everyone in this room, you are a walking treasure. God has put so much treasure on the inside of you. Yes, I'm going to talk about youth ministry because I got passion, a passion for the next generation. And I want your wisdom for them. Because if I didn't have people to give me wisdom, I wouldn't be where I am. Yes, I want people to help Pastor Kevin. Yes, I want missions to go all, missionaries to go all over this earth and preach and pray. Are you giving God a yes? Is your heart yielded? Did you bow the knee of your heart and your will and your logic and give God yes? I want to pray for everybody right now as Pastor Adam comes. If you stand to your feet. But before he, he plays, I want to just, everyone just bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment. And just think of the goodness of God. And if you are a person who have not made Jesus the head of your life, while nobody is looking, while we're not judging you, nobody is judging you. This is between you and God. Because one day, you're going to have to stand before a holy God a righteous God who's sinless. And he's going to look at you and say one or two things. Either welcome me and my good and faithful servant or depart from me, I never knew you. So if you are here today and you haven't made Christ your Savior, I ask you to come down while everyone is praying in their respectable places. And if you're a person who know that you haven't been in the place that you need to be in Christ and you want to rededicate your life, I ask you to come. And the third person, if you want to, if you've been coming here and if you feel that this is the stream of Christ that you need to feed you and your family from and you want to join this church, I want, I'm going to ask you to come too. So I give you three things. And if that's any of you to respond, I ask you to come now before I pray. Man, we got somebody coming. Hallelujah. Amen. We got somebody else coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Some of us, we're clapping. Some of us clapping and know we should have made that step too. We know that God is tugging at our hearts, not just to do more in this church, but to give him more. God ain't worrying about your tithes or your, your attendance. God wants that yes. He wants that, that heart to say, God, yes to your way and yes to your will.
Father, let's lift our hands all around this room. God, we bow our knees in our heart. We tell you yes today, God. We tell you use us as you see fit. God, make our crooked ways straight. Lead and guide us to where we need to serve you. Help us advance the kingdom of God. Lord, we're, we, we're in Journey Church, but we are the body of Christ. And God, some of us are your hands. Some of us are your feet. God, we need you today. We put our will down. We wave the white flag of our heart. Your will, God. We need you like never before. We need you more than life. We need you more than oxygen. We need you more than the air that we breathe. So God, right now, we give ourselves to you more and more. As a church, as your sons, as your daughters of Christ. We need you, Jesus. We worship you and not just our lip service, but with our heart. All your promises. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. All your promises. All over this room, keep those eyes closed and let's just keep worshiping the Lord of hosts. The Lord of lights. Yes. The author and finisher of our faith. The author and finisher. You are our healer, God. You are our leader. We need you this Sunday. We need you this week. These are your sheep, God. Heal those who need to be healed. Lord Jesus you are faithful God I dare you to get out of your seat right now and come to this altar and worship God I dare you to get out of your seat and come worship God at this altar you see our God all your promises yesterday. I dare you right now to get out of that comfortable space and come worship the God of your salvation. My confidence is your faithfulness. Come on, you all over this room. If you are bringing come to this altar. If you promise and worship your God. Hallelujah. Revival to start? Revival starts at the altar. Is your faithfulness for I will rest. We'll rest in you, Jesus. In your promises, my confidence. Yes, Lord. Your spirit is here. Is your faithfulness. The Holy Spirit is here. For faithful. The spirit of God is here. Worship God where you are. Faithful Worship God where you are. Forever you will be. Hallelujah. Faithful you are. You're faithful, God. You're faithful. You're faithful. For all your promises. You're faithful. Yes and amen. It's Pastor Adam. All he's your going to promise. He's going to continue yes, to worship. Amen. And I know some of you guys got to go, so I'm going to dismiss you. But you know what? We're going to keep worshiping. Sometimes we just need to give God more.
And you're welcome to, to go after we, I do this benediction, but you know what? You guys who want to worship, I dare you to come down and feel the presence of God at this altar and let God minister to your heart. So God, thank you for this congregation. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the spirit of the Holy Ghost that's in this place. Thank you for your angels, God. Lord, we just pray over the week of Journey Church, all of the people in this congregation right now, we pray for their families. We pray for their health. We pray for their finances. They are blessed. They are called. They are your children, God. Lord, bless those that bless them, God. Protection over them, God. We pray that they walk in the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, in the name of Jesus. God, bless them in their homes. As they leave this place but not your presence, God, we ask that you bless them in Jesus' name. Pastor Adam, let's keep worshiping. Your promises, your faith Thank you, God. Lord. You're faithful. You're faithful, Lord. You're faithful. We'll rest and I will rest. Hallelujah. In your promises, my confidence. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, Jesus. Faithfulness, but I will rest. In your promises, my confidence. walked out Jesus you never left you us promise when we was betrayed you never betrayed us Jesus is your faithfulness. we could have died in our sins Jesus your faithfulness. your faithful Lord God your blood covered us you're close to us we just want to give our hearts to you Jesus we just, on your promises. we just want to give you more of us, Jesus. Jesus, we just need you. We need you, God. We need you, Jesus. Lord, we're nothing without you. We would mess up time and time again. God, keep us in your hand. Keep us in your hand, Lord God. Keep us in your hand, Lord God. Keep this church in your hand, Lord God. Keep these people in your hand, Lord God. We just worship you, God. You're worthy. 
You're perfect. Your words are true. You're faithful. You are Your promise. 